Today I'm transforming my boring living room from this to this. And I handmade these prints myself and I'm gonna show you how you can too on a budget. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you the goal for this video. I want to print massive prints. I'm talking five feet by seven, eight feet wide. And I want them to do two purposes. One, I want them to look awesome in my house because I have really tall, like 13, 14 foot ceilings. And I want huge prints so that they make an impact. And I also want to make them into sound baffles. The homes here in Puerto Rico, they're all tile with concrete walls. And if you don't do any sound treatment, everything is super echoey. I can't hear anybody if I have a party at my house, if I have five or six people all talking, if I have music playing and the baby screaming and the dogs barking, it drives me crazy. I wanna be able to build these so that they're also kind of a sound baffle. Now, a year or two ago, I did some sound treatment in the studio I have in Charleston, and I made a video about that. You can check out that video right here. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing. So the goal for this is to build wooden frames that I'm gonna be able to put rock wool in, which is a sound dampening material. And then I wanna stretch canvas around that frame. But instead of it just being normal textile that blends into the decor of my room, I want them to be awesome photo prints. And the reason I'm having to make this myself is one, I couldn't find a company that would print this large. Two, nobody would build the sound baffles into the prints the way that I wanted. And three, I've tested some of these other companies sound treating you know, art and they never really work as well as they should. So I know my system is going to be as good as possible. I'm gonna make these about four inches deep and I'm gonna put between four, six, or maybe even eight panels of rock wool in there. So by the time I'm done, these should be significantly larger than anything I can buy. It's gonna have my own custom artwork, and I've already tested the print material, so I know the resolution on these prints are gonna look awesome. This video is sponsored by Click-A-Snap, which is a brand new social media platform. It's one part Instagram, one part Shutterstock, and one part Google AdSense all wrapped into one. The most unique element of Click -a Snap is that you get paid up to $9 for every 1,000 views your images get, which is honestly much more than we get paid on YouTube. And if you want, you can choose to sell your photos on the platform as well. Unlike every other social media platform with Click -a Snap, you don't have to give up your image rights, you don't have to figure out how to game some algorithm, and there's no data harvesting or selling to third-party entities. If you're a photographer looking for a new way to display your work while also making money, Join Click a Snap in the link below. All right, my package came in. Let's open this thing. It's shockingly small. All right, so this video is not sponsored by the company printing this. This is created by PrintFab. It's like PrintFab without the T, P R I N F A B dot com. I'm going to tell you the cost of these prints at the end because they are ridiculously cheap. And I think once I get the wood and build everything out, I think each one of these massive prints is going to be less than $200, which is incredible. Now, this company unfortunately just told me that they will not ship any more fabric to Puerto Rico for whatever reason, but they do ship to the United States. It says here they are based out of the United Kingdom. So next time I do this, if I have any huge prints I need to put on my wall, I am going to have to mail this probably to Florida and then have somebody forward it to me. So let's go ahead and open this up. This image here is 52 inches wide by 83 inches tall. And as you can see, it's been folded up, so I'm definitely gonna have to steam this. I printed both of these images on two different fabrics. This one is the soft velvet. It's 8.3 ounces, so it's pretty thick. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the image quality on this is really incredible. Like, I would think printing on canvas or fabric would look really bad, especially for the price that I did this at, but this looks unbelievable. The second one I printed on what did I print this on? This is on waterproof canvas. And this is actually a little less heavy. They're saying this is 7.1 ounces. And this is an image that I took two years ago of the marina here in my neighborhood. And I can already tell this is much more sturdy, but I'm worried that 
Maybe this is gonna be harder to steam out. This is also 52 inches wide. That's kind of the limit that you have on a ream of fabric. So four feet and three inches wide, but then this one is 93 inches long or seven feet, nine inches. So there are a few tools that you're gonna need. I'm not gonna go into all the details about how to build the frame. I already made that one video showing that kind of in depth. Um, but you are gonna need a saw. Now, ideally you'd have a miter saw where you can cut 45 degree angles and get everything perfect. I don't have that here in Puerto Rico, so I'm gonna have to use this skill saw. You're also going to want some kind of clamp so that when you build your corners, you can get them nice and plumb. This will allow me to make nice 90 degree angles and then screw everything in. You're also gonna need a staple gun to stretch the fabric around and staple it. And then finally, you're gonna need a drill with some kind of finishing screw. Some screw that's small enough so that when you drill into your wood, you're not cracking the wood. The wood that I'm using here is about four inches here by a half an inch. And then the length is eight feet. And this is perfect because the longest print that I'm making is seven feet, nine inches. So I'll be able to build everything out of that. So now that I've gone through all of the tools and materials that you're gonna need, it's time for me to start cutting wood and get this thing built. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna lay down a barrier and basically wrap the rock wool so that none of those fibers could get into the air. So I bought this uh, drop cloth. This is a two mil piece of plastic. I'm gonna basically lay this down, have it sit right behind these cross beams. Then I'm gonna put the rock wool in. I've designed this so that the width of every piece of rock wool will sit perfectly inside this frame. And then I'll have to just layer them on top of each other. I don't know how many pieces I need. Maybe it's like six or seven. And then I'm gonna take the rest of this fabric and wrap it around the back so that essentially the sound dampening element of this is going to be contained inside this two mil piece of plastic. And that's gonna prevent all the fibers from going everywhere and keep it nice and clean if I ever need to open this back up. Okay, so I got the rock wool installed. I got it all wrapped up so it's not gonna shed. And then I just put a few other pieces of wood here just to kind of hold it all in place. I'm realizing if I add too much wood, this thing's gonna start to get really heavy. So I'm curious to see how much it weighs because this is pretty much done now. I just have to wrap the print. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up. Oh boy. That is a massive frame. One thing I wanted to make really easy when I go and mount these onto my frames is I wanna be able to stretch everything and keep everything horizontal. When you're dealing with prints this large, especially landscapes that have strong horizontal lines, it's gonna be really difficult to make sure that everything lines up. So what I did in Photoshop was, I basically made these three reference lines, one of them being right at the horizon line. And so I have this one here on the left side of the print, and then I have another one on the right side of the print. So I know that if I measure the frame and say like I measure you know 30 inches up from the bottom, both sides of this fabric should be mounted at 30 inches exactly on that line. And that's gonna prevent the canvas from being stapled, you know, Caddy wampus, and then when you get it up there, you realize your horizon's not straight. And then the second thing that I'm trying to imagine is once I have this wrapped around the frame, I also want to try to go back and add a piece of wood over the print so that it, it looks like the print is suspended with you know a final border around it. I don't want the canvas just wrapped around the wood and then this side of the wood being exposed. I think that's gonna look bad. Hopefully if I get this done the way that I want, I'll be able to show it to you so it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so this is a massive print. Um, I don't know quite yet how this is gonna look in my living room. I still have to pull it a little more taunt and play around with it a little bit more. I'm a little bummed that the fabric does show kind of the change in the pile. I think the print itself looks incredible. I was able to steam out most all of the creases but again, because this is that velvet material, you know, if you brush your hand down and then you brush your hand up, the, uh, the pile of the fabric will actually change. Once I got all the prints mounted and ready to hang, I decided to use something different to hang them. I used these really clever French cleats. I'll put a link in the description below. This made hanging these incredibly easy. There's no worry about them falling or sagging with the traditional picture frame wire. These were a godsend. All right, this is an audio check with no art in the room at all. You can hear how reverby it is, even with rugs and sofas and you know decor. We have a huge wall here, huge wall here. Of course, <laughs> large concrete ceiling as well. Check. 
And this is what it sounds like with the room treated with the two big prints. There's definitely still some reverb. I think it just goes to show that to treat a room properly, you really need a ton of material. And so a lot of those like little prints or thin prints or those little egg crates that you put on the walls just probably aren't gonna cut it. So there you go, a simple way to make really massive prints that not only make your space look cooler, but also help with the sound treatment. Now I printed all of these images on three different types of fabric. If you go to Print Fab's website, they have probably 30 different fabrics that you can choose and you can get a sample pack. The first print that I did was on Duchess Satin and I thought looking at the sample that this would be the best fabric because it is the most high res. Uh, the print quality on this looks great. I printed a sample image which was the Fitzroy Mountain shot that I showed at the beginning of the video and what I found was that although this is the absolute best looking fabric, it is so fine that when you start stretching it and stapling it, I was actually getting it to run and have little streaks across the print. I had to pull mini staples out and restaple it and pull it tight and it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this one. Of the two prints that I did in my living room, my favorite was probably the waterproof canvas. This is definitely the least high res. If you get really close to it, you can see kind of the weave of the fabric. But I found that this was kind of a perfect balance between being able to staple it and pull it taut and having nice resolution when you step away. It does look really good. Um, the soft velvet, I really, really like this one. The only problem is the pile. If you, you know, have a part of your frame that's like blue sky or a solid color, you're really going to see the change in the fabric depending on how it's brushed. But I love the way that this feels and I do think it, it almost looks more painterly. And because the fabric is a little longer, it's like it, it kind of blurs the pixels a little bit better. It's kind of hard to describe, but basically I would go over to Print Fab, get that test kit and you can get all the different samples and check that out for yourself. So now let's get to the cost of all of these prints because that's probably what you're most interested in. I got most of this material from Home Depot. That's what we have here in Puerto Rico. Um, and a few things I ordered off Amazon. I'll put links to everything in the description below. For the frame itself, I used one by six inch boards. That's a little thicker so that I could hold the rock wool. And then I also used one by two pieces of wood that kind of added support and cross beams on the backside of the uh, frame. I also use this one by one quarter inch lattice, which I put on the side to kind of hide the edge from where I had to pull the fabric and then staple it in. The rock wool, the two mil plastic, miscellaneous screw staples and glue, the French cleats I did get on Amazon. All of this hardware that I used to make the actual frame added up to about $200, just a little bit under $200. Now the prints from Print Fab, these things cost me $75 a print. I can't believe how cheap that was. Um, you do have to pay $60 to have the package shipped to you. So I did two prints and if you divide that out, it comes out to $102 with the shipping for each print. So if you're going to do this, I would recommend going ahead and queuing up four, five, six prints, printing them all at once so that you only have to pay the $60 shipping fee once. And so if I add everything up, each print cost $292 from the printing of the material to the frame itself. So if you can find better deals on wood and that sort of thing, maybe you could get this even cheaper. But in my opinion, $300 a print for these massive prints that not only look great, but also add the sound dampening, to me, that's a heck of a deal. If you tried to buy these online through a company that just makes prints themselves, I guarantee you at this size, they're gonna be $500, maybe $1,000. If you start getting into the acrylic encapsulated prints, they look awesome, right? They're super glossy and they're the highest res you can get. They look really contemporary. Those things at this size, I priced them out, would be three to $5,000. And I don't even know that they would ship those here in Puerto Rico. And of course, also acrylic, it doesn't have any sound dampening at all. So there you go, $300 if you're handy and you want really large prints. I think you could easily do this yourself. Go to printfab.com, go ahead and get the sample pack. 
This company, again, they did not sponsor this video. They don't really even cater towards photographers. So it would be interesting to see if they start getting a bunch of orders for photos, if maybe they would offer some kind of photo package or give some better uh, advice on what type of fabric to actually use for photo prints. I'm kind of doing this just as a personal project to put some art in my house. If you guys enjoy these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. We're literally thousands of subscribers away from reaching our 1 million goal, which has taken far too long to reach. If you enjoy reading about photography, head over to fstoppers.com. We have articles there. And if you wanna become a better photographer and perhaps start taking some photos to put on your own wall, head over to fstoppers.com store. We have some incredibly thorough tutorials on everything from headshots, architectural photography, product photography, macro photography. And if you're interested in landscape photography, check out Elia Licardi's brand new Photographing the World Japan. In this tutorial, Elia Licardi takes you to his favorite locations in all of Japan, shows you how he photographs some of the most iconic scenes, and takes you back to the post-production studio and shows you all of the post-production tips that he does to make his images look incredible. I've learned so much from him when it comes to landscape photography, and we are really excited to finally release this new video in this series. If you use YouTube, you can save 15% on any of our tutorials. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't tell you how excited I am now to walk into my living room and see these massive prints, especially at night when the lights are lighting them up. It's super cool and I really enjoyed this project. I will see you guys really soon.